What's up, guys? Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Kalkwasser for your reef aquarium. What is it? What's it supposed to do? How do you dose it? Should you dose it? These are all things we will talk about. Let's start at the very beginning. What is Kalkwasser? Kalkwasser is German for lime water, and it's essentially a saturated calcium hydroxide solution. Calcium hydroxide is a molecule consisting of a single calcium atom and two hydroxide groups. When mixed in water, a portion dissolves forming Kalkwasser, the stuff that we're interested in, and the rest creates a cloudy suspension called milk of lime. Kalkwasser is a very basic solution. It has a pH of over 12, which can be a very desirable thing for aquariums that struggle with low pH, which we will touch on momentarily. Now that we've quickly covered what it is, here is why Kalkwasser is significant in the reef aquarium hobby. If you like to keep stony corals, as many of us do, they require both calcium and alkalinity to build up their calcium carbonate skeletons. There are many ways to accomplish this. If you only have a few stony corals in your reef tank, it might be as simple as keeping up with regular water changes to maintain the necessary levels of both calcium and alkalinity. Once you get into more densely populated aquariums with faster growing stony corals, water changes alone might not be enough to keep up. The three most popular methods of maintaining appropriate water chemistry above and beyond water changes are two-part additives, calcium reactors, and Kalkwasser. All three of these things work, and some hobbyists choose to use a combination of techniques to get the job done. So these things, don't look at them as mutually exclusive options. For the purposes of this video, however, I'm going to focus mainly on Kalkwasser. So let's talk about these benefits. The first benefit is that it adds both calcium and hydroxide ions to your water, and it does so in a balanced fashion, which can be a little bit tricky at times because traditionally raising both calcium and alkalinity simultaneously is a challenge. The two like to react with one another, and when they react with one another, they can have this seesaw effect. That is why when dosing two-part additives, it's recommended to dose them in different areas and even in two different times so that they don't immediately interact and you never really get that bioavailability. Kalkwasser is able to do that in a single solution. Also, because Kalkwasser is just water, calcium ions, and hydroxide ions in solution, there's no other ions floating around in there that would mess with your salinity. In theory, because there are different qualities of Kalkwasser that we can get into a little bit later as well. But to my point here, things like two-part involves sodium and chloride ions. Over time, those things can affect your water salinity. The other added benefit to this is you can basically use Kalkwasser as a de facto top-off instead of regular RO water. And many people do exactly that. Instead of counteracting a tank's daily evaporation with a reservoir of RO, they use Kalkwasser and get the added benefit of this calcium and alkalinity boost. The second major effect of Kalkwasser deals with that high pH that we talked about earlier. Our tanks sit inside the home, and homes, especially in basements, are known to build up carbon dioxide. Some homes are better ventilated than others, but gas exchange in homes is a major detail and most homes fall short in this regard. The buildup of carbon dioxide in the home affects our aquariums by forming carbonic acid, which lowers the pH of the water over time. This is also how calcium reactors work. We bubble in carbon dioxide into a reactor to lower the pH to dissolve a calcium carbonate media and slowly drip that effluent back into our tanks. You might be thinking, doesn't that lower the pH of the tank? And yeah, it probably does. In the case of poorly ventilated homes with a calcium reactor, that could very well lead to chronically low pH, which is not a good thing at all for your tank inhabitants. Kalkwasser 
has a pH of a little bit over 12, which is a lot considering that pH measurements are not linear. They are base 10 logarithmic. What does that mean? It means that, for example, a pH of 7 versus a pH of 8 isn't just a little bit. 8 is 10 times more basic than 7. So 12 versus 7 is like, what, 100,000 times more basic? Yeah. Adding Kalkwasser is going to pull up that depressed pH. The third major benefit is something purely anecdotal on my part. There's not a lot of science behind it, but it seems to do some magical stuff for the health of the reef tank. The tanks that I've seen that dose Kalkwasser regularly, they just look good. It's hard for me to pinpoint why that would be, but it does. Kalkwasser interacts with a lot of other things in the water. It is doing more than just providing bioavailable calcium and carbonate while boosting pH. For example, it might, and I say might because the mechanism isn't well understood, it might bind up phosphate and form calcium phosphate, which then falls out of solution. Whether it meaningfully drops phosphate levels or not really isn't my point. It's more that Kalkwasser does other things that seem to have an overall positive effect. Fourth major benefit, it's dirt cheap. Granted, there are these different grades of calcium hydroxide. You can get the ultra cheap pickling lime products used to literally make pickles for what amounts to pennies. I've used those products before and they seem fine. It's a little bit more clay colored though and I'm sure that there are some impurities going on there that you probably want to avoid if you can. The reagent grade stuff is snow white in color and in the grand scheme of things, not really that expensive either. It's only expensive compared to the super cheap stuff that wasn't made for the aquarium hobby. Compared to just about anything else, say two-part or the implementation of a calcium reactor, or heck, even just salt mix for water changes, reagent-grade calcium hydroxide is looking like a real bargain. Fifth and last major benefit to Kalkwasser. It can be super duper simple to implement. All you need is a container and a reliable method of administering it slowly to your tank. The cheapest version I've ever done was a bucket with a little drip hose and a clamp. Now I've got a much more sophisticated system, but if you're ultra budget conscious, there are ways to do this very cost effectively. You might be wondering, if Calcwasser is so great, why are we here at Tidal Gardens just now starting to get back into it? Well, there are some downsides to Kalkwasser. Nothing is perfect, so let's talk about some of the issues with Kalk. The first one relates to the major benefit number five that we just talked about. The fact that it is so easy to implement. That implementation can be done really poorly. When all you need is a bucket, an airline tube, and a clamp, it opens up the possibility for the flow rate of Kalkwasser to be too fast, which is not something you want to be doing. You want a slow trip. In the past, when we did this in the greenhouse, I used a bucket and a valve. The valve worked a little bit better for a slow drip, but where I messed up was not waiting long enough for the solution to settle, and I ended up dosing that cloudy supernate into the tank. There is a lot of room for user error. Now we've gone with a much more technical system where we're using a peristaltic dosing pump to administer a small amount of Kalkwasser periodically over the full 24 hours rather than setting a drip with a valve or a clamp and just hoping it goes well. Because this is a commercial facility, I need things to be a little bit more foolproof because I have been exactly that full before. Downside number two. It's not great if you already have sky-high pH. Let's say that your tank is in a room that gets great gas exchange and you already have your tank at a pH of around 8.4. In this situation, Kalkwasser might not be a good idea because you really don't want to elevate your pH that much more. Again, we've covered some other options that would probably suit your system much better than Kalkwasser. Quickly moving on, downside number three. 
Let's imagine a situation where you have tremendous demand for calcium and alkalinity in your reef tank, but for whatever reason, you just don't have a lot of evaporation going on. Maybe the humidity is super high where you live, and you're only evaporating a gallon or less per day in your system. At that point, you're physically limited in how much you can add. If you can only top off a half gallon or something like that, half gallon, one gallon, that's it. Assuming that you have a ton of demand, frankly, a half gallon of calc is not gonna be very impactful in a large system. It'll still do its thing to some degree, but you may need to lean more heavily on those other methods we talked about, like two-part or calcium reactors to meet that demand. The last downside that I'll mention is that Kalkwasser is caustic and it's really not great for things like pumps and probes. If you dose it aggressively near your pumps, it's going to form a chalky white deposit that can diminish the performance of those pumps or even cause them to fail. So you want to maintain them more frequently to keep them clean and in good working order. Now that we've covered those pluses and minuses of Kalkwasser, let's talk about just some random helpful tips if you decide to implement this in your tank. First tip, don't sweat the measurements when you're making the Kalkwasser. Kalkwasser that we're interested in is that clear liquid layer that forms after that undissolved white powder settles out. It's good to stay within the guidelines of what the recipe calls for, so depending on the product, it might be around one teaspoon per gallon, something in that ballpark. If you happen to go over, it's not that big of a deal because you aren't going to overdose that solution. The clear solution is already saturated and any extra powder is just gonna precipitate right out to the bottom. You would be wasting a little bit of the product, but not the end of the world. Second tip, can you reuse that undissolved calc? Yes, yes you can, I've done it. But it's also a good idea to add a little bit of fresh powder as well because I have noticed a difference in the appearance of that new powder versus the undissolved old powder from the previous mixing. The new powder when first mixed looks like fluffy snowflakes while the older stuff just makes that milky cloudy solution. It might work the same but it just doesn't look quite the same and again since calc is so cheap if you wanted to be extra cautious you could just remake a new batch every single time. But again if you wanted to reuse it the chemistry still does work. Third tip, Kalkwasser is pretty intense. We've mentioned it before, it's caustic, it's high in pH, and while you can't really overdose making the solution up, you can certainly overdose it adding it to your tank. Dosing Kalkwasser slowly and in a high flow area of the tank or sump is really recommended to quickly distribute it. If you dose it too quickly or in too low flow of an area, you might notice it coming back out of solution. Worse yet, it might make a concentrated pocket that can cause chemical burns to whatever it touches. All right guys, that pretty much does it for our Calcwasser primer. Thanks for watching and if you got some value from this video and like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to this channel. All right, until next time, happy reefing.